Let's talk about the rappers for a minute. Can we talk about the rappers for a moment? Let's talk about Tupac Shakur for a moment. Tupac Shakur is a child of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, born out of the spirit of the revolution of the 60s. Tupac Shakur, fire in his bones. Huh? Boldness and rebellion in his blood. Born from his beautiful, bold Black Panther mama, Afeni. Sitting in the jail cell, a revolutionary woman carrying the fruit of life, mocking the child in her womb, mocking the child with rebellion, mocking the child with insurrection, mocking the child with a spirit to not go along with what's been going on. Dear Pac, every thug shares a teardrop and use teeth to bite off beer tops and pour out a little liquor. I have way too much respect for Tupac. Way too much, man. He's, he was like, he was a god. Only God can do it like this. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. So Nas, just recently in an interview was asked to give his top albums, top favorite albums of all times. And wouldn't you know, not a single mention of Tupac Shakur. Now this is Nas's opinion. You have yours. He's allowed to have his. And I certainly have mine as well. The question to me is, did Nas simply leave Tupac out because maybe Tupac didn't record any of his favorite albums all times? Or maybe he forgot to mention Tupac? Or just maybe he snubbed and left Tupac out on purpose. But anyway, Without further ado, here's Nas's favorite albums of all times. On this list, he has Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, John Coltrane, A Love Supreme, Bob James One, Stevie Wonders, Songs in the Key of Life, Marvin Gaye, Hear My Dear, Michael Jackson, Thriller, Run DMC, King of Rock, Anita Baker, Rapture, Boogie Down Productions, Criminal Minded. Definitely one of my favorite albums of all times. Along with that, Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life. Love those albums. Eric Being Rock, Kim Paid in Four, MC Shan, Down by Law, Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the King. Slick Rick, The Great Adventures of Slick Rick, Public Enemy, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, Cool G Rap and DJ Polo, Want It Dead or Alive, Main Source, Breaking Atoms. Now let's stop there. Every single one of those albums I just named, I agree with. Love BDP, Love Eric B and Rakim, Love MC Shan, love Big Daddy Kane, love Slick Rick, love Public Enemy, love Cool G Rap, and of course, Main Source. That was the group that gave Nas his start, you know, by basically putting him on a song live at the barbecue. The rest was history. All right, so it sounds good. Then you got Ice Cube, Death Certificate. A Tribe Called Quest, The Low End Theory, Scarface, Mr. Scarface is Back, N.W.A., Niggas for Life, 
Dr. Dre, The Chronic, Jay-Z, Reasonable Dope, The Notorious B.I.G., Life at the Death, and Outcast. Now, here's my problem with this part of the list right here. Ice Cube, yeah. N.W.A., yeah. Outcast, yeah. I see Nas, you know, rocking to all of those different groups. Tribe Called Quest, definitely. I know how he feels about Q-Tip, yeah. I feel the same way about Q-Tip. Dope. But Jay-Z and Biggie, <laughs> don't make me laugh. That's fake love. That's flat out phony. Because we know for a fact, especially around the time when Reasonable Doubt came out, Nas couldn't stand Jay-Z. Jay-Z had been reaching out for years trying to get Nas to, you know, hop on a song with him, help make him official. Jay-Z was up and coming, but he was a signed artist, but he didn't have the kind of respect, the notoriety he was looking for. And he absolutely loved Nas's music at this point in time and wanted to work with Nas. Nas refused to work with him. That's what started the whole thing. Wanted to be on every last one, one of my classics. And we all know that Biggie and Nas was battling for the crown of New York City. Trying to outdo each other, sending subliminals to each other the whole time. And it was about to get ugly. It was about to get messy. Up until the time when Biggie passed unexpectedly. Or should I say, when he was murdered. They were just starting to trade blows. But like I said, it was headed to a different direction. After Nas did the firm remix you know, and said what he said about the, taking the crown from the fake king of New York. I take the crown off the so-called king of the town and lock it down, lock it down. And Nas's brother Jungle got on the end of the track and said, you know what it is. And Little C said it himself that at this point, after Biggie heard this song, he was ready to come at Nas full throttle. This is Jungle. Yo, big Jungle, boy, what? And I don't want it. No more jabs. It is what it is. Now, could have Nas learned to appreciate Jay-Z's music for what it is over time? And they squashed their beef and, you know, they became cordial, became friends, even became business partners. So could he go back and listen to Jay-Z's album with fresh ears and form a new opinion? Absolutely, that's possible. Could Nas have learned to see Biggie as the brother he says Biggie was? And not the rival, since Biggie is no longer here. Nas is almost 30 years older and more mature. Could he go back and listen to Biggie's music and appreciate it for the genius of what it was? Of course. But my problem with the list is how can you not mention Tupac? <laughs> how can you not mention Tupac when forever, you know, you'll always be tied to Tupac in the history books? in some way, shape, or form, either as a peer or as a foe or, you know, as a, a lyricist, as a, a revolutionary rapper, conscious MC. You know, at the time, Pac and Nas, to me, was the most important MCs that come from that era, once again, my opinion. But given the history between you and Tupac, you would think Nas would at least gave Tupac a mention. He could have been way down on his list, but, but to leave him out at all is just, to me, wrong. And you got groups like Wu-Tang Clan who put out some great albums. The Nas are friends with these guys and, you know, was joint at the hip to a degree with the Clan back in the mid-90s and early 90s, for him not to mention them is, is kind of wild too, man. Because I thought Nas and Raekwon was tight. I thought Nas and Ghost was tight. Nas did work with the RZA. You know, no mention of Wu-Tang Clan as well. Just strange, man. Now, you can't tell me 
that sometimes when some people say Tupac is better than Nas, that it doesn't bother Nas. I'm sure psychologically he may not really care, but deep down inside somewhere he does care. And I think this may have been a chance to take a shot at people that would say something like that. Because you can't tell me Nas knows Tupac's body of work better than probably some of us. He probably studies it a little bit more. But you got Tupacalypse now. You got Strictly for My Niggas. You got the Thug Life album. You got Me Against the World. Then you had All Eyes on Me. And since Machiavelli came out the same year when Tupac was alive in 1996, then I'll say you got Machiavelli as well. You mean to tell me that Nas couldn't have picked one of those albums, not one, to show Tupac a little bit of love? Come on. In my opinion, this was personal. But tell me what you think. Is this disrespectful for Nas not mentioning Tupac and all these great songs that, you know, that Tupac wrote in his lifetime and put out in public love and to have Nas even do one of the songs as a tribute and call Tupac a god to him? But Nas did not even mention Tupac. Is that disrespectful for Nas not to say Tupac had one of his favorite albums of all times? Or is Nas simply just being honest and do you respect him for being real? Anyway, don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.